LT Quilters. Today is Wednesday, March 25th, 2020. It is now 7 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, for people that are not already in the chat room, if you're watching this at any other time, just know that you're watching an upload of a live chat. So I need to pull you up on my phone. I just kind of slid into my craft room. <laughs> Let's see, YouTube. All right, notifications off. Okay, I think we should off. And volume down. <laughs> All right, guys. Let's see, who's here? We've got Vivian here. She says, hi, T. Diane57 is here. Says, never fear, Diane is here. <laughs> um, June Hansen is here, says, hi, Miss T and everyone. Phyllis Garner is here, says, hi, T and everyone. Melinda C says, hi, T and everyone. And guys, hold on for a minute because somebody's blocks came in and I forgot to bring them in here. Hold on. Sorry about that. It's been a rough week. <laughs> um, Cheryl Clute is here. Hi, Cheryl. She says, hi, T and everyone. Cheryl Bean is here. Also says, hi, T and everyone. Hope everyone is well. Let's see. Trivia Henderson is here. Says, hi, T. Uh, Vivian, Diane, and everyone. Maria Mayer is here saying hi to everyone. Peggy O'Connor is here, says hi TNT Quilters. I hope all are well and are taking this quarantine time to sew. Claudette Bettis is here, says hello T and everyone. Crafting with CTMPH, Panda Mary says hey everyone, hi Mary. Quilting for the Soul says hello T and everyone. Colin Bowser is here, says, good evening, T and fellow quilters. Good thing we have a love of quilting to help us through this trying time. Darlene Farmer says, greetings from Northern Virginia. Bonita Nance is here, says, hi, Miss T and everyone. June Billing says, hi, T and everyone. Linda Griffith says, hi, T and all. Patrice Crump says, hi, everyone. Hope all are well. Celia Swain is here, says, hello to everyone. And Mary is from Quilting, no, she's saying greetings from Luckett's, Virginia. Teresa McCormick is here, says hello all from Wisconsin. Carol Green says hi every, hi T and everyone, I mail my blocks on Tuesday. I'll let you know, Carol, when they come. I checked yesterday and today, I got a package yesterday, but I haven't even done any computer work to let this person know. That's why I wanted to go run and get the package. I haven't been at the computer the last couple of days. Lietta Bryan is here. Says hello to everyone. Hi Lietta. Pamela Roberson says good evening tea and everyone. Debbie Klokovich says hi T. Probably butchered your name. I'm sorry. Tucker is here saying hi everyone. Hello from Pennsylvania. Betty Harris says hello T Quilters. Hope everyone is well. Cheryl says it's been a very busy week and it's only Wednesday. <laughs> uh, Lucy Jackson is here, says hi T and all. Hi Lucy. And Tucker is reminding everybody to don't forget to thumbs up the video. Thank you so much, Tucker. Adrian Riaz is here, says God bless everyone. Thank you so much. We all need it. Betty Harris is here, says making masks for a friend and family. Um... Let's see, Diane says, my blocks are on hold while I make some more masks. Mary says, I wish I could be crafting, but our office is working remotely and busier than ever, I'm a, I can imagine. Uh, Angela Stringer says, hey, T and y'all, I'm, I'm in the house. That's, hi, Angela. <laughs> uh, 
Um, Trisha Otello says, hello from Lancaster, California. Good to see you. Thank you so much. And Cheryl is also making masks for hospitals. And you heard a lot of people saying that they are making masks um, for various reasons, family, hospitals, different organizations are collecting them, quilt shops are collecting them. I've made a few because I have a few family members that work in healthcare, as well as some family members that have high risk um, issues dealing with um, asthma, lupus, various other things. And so the last thing they need is coronavirus. So anything, I know that these are not N95 proof or whatever, but I just thought that I would make some for my family. I just got through making this one here uh, before I, I slid out of my room and then forgot the time and <laughs> came back in. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's 6.59 and I had to boot up the um, recorder here. So yeah, so I know a lot of us are making um, masks. If you don't know, you haven't heard about the mask issue, there are like a gazillion YouTube videos on how to make masks. I am... I made a batch and I did the regular batch. I did put some flannel on the back of some because I have postal workers as well in my family. So I put the flannel on the back for them that are still out walking and it's still kind of cold. Um, I'm going to make the next ones and I'm actually going to be using the polypropylene this time. I um, have a gazillion bags that I probably have gotten from Quilt Show. You think I can find them or know where they are? They probably are in my car is what I'm thinking. <laughs> but I think I did remember I cleaned my car out at some point and I kind of reduced the number of bags that were in my car. But I happen to have bought some blue bags myself to give out to customers. And so I'm actually cutting up my bags and I'm going to put those inside because they will repel water a little bit. And so I'm thinking if somebody actually comes up and their spit gets on you that that will help so it's a moisture barrier in between the two pieces of fabric um i was using two pieces of print fabric now i'm using one piece of print and a piece of muslin um yeah so i have like this much ribbon left so when it's gone it's just i'm done because now there's a ribbon shortage and you know what i'm kind of burned out on these bags already <laughs> i had one you know, these were not complete uh, packages. So I had one of these that looked like it was a lot. And I made, let's see, 13. I made 16 or 17 of these masks. And so now I'm going to make like another 12. And then I think I'm kind of done. I'm tired of them. I don't, they're not fun to me. <laughs> I don't know why. Anybody else think that the masks are not fun to make, even though they're quick? Uh, not those bags, uh, Diane, but this is another bag. It's like when you, uh, like a lot of times when you go to quilt shows, they'll give you bags or some quilt shops might have the polypropylene bag and I don't have one in here cause I've cut, I, I cut two of them up. I was only able to get six pieces out of each bag. So let me go back and see who else has come in. Um... Tucker, it says, I'm knitting pocket prayer shawls from my great-grandma's church. Already got six done today. That's pretty cool. And Lucy Jackson says, I love making the mask. I'm a person that I'm, I don't like um, repetitive stuff. And so since it's so small of a project, it's not like... Um, it's, it, it is a fast project, but it's so repetitive that then I get slower because I don't like doing it. And I'm finding that I do better just making one mask at a time instead of trying to uh, do like, sew around all of them at one time, then flip all of them and then sew the outsides. I find I do better just doing one at a time because um, I'm one of those people that I love gadgets and I'm the same way, so I love techniques. And so there are no techniques. <laughs> So I'm just kind of bored making them. They're not fun at all. Um, so I'm glad you're enjoying them, uh, Lucy. 
Jess Grams for short says, hello, I'm here. Hi, welcome. Uh, Diane says, no fun, but necessary. Vivian says, not fun, but necessary, yes. Cheryl says, I've been making ones with a pocket to put filter in. Quick so. And I've seen those too, and they were some of them were kind of curving. And I actually, when I made these, it fit my face pretty decent. And none of them are going to actually stop the coronavirus that we're making at home. It's just a deterrent or make it harder for it to enter. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and stay with the rectangles because they're easy to cut and they're also easy to sew. But I did see a lot of videos on the curved ones where they had the pockets where you could put the filters. You can use like uh, vacuum bag filters. And it was so funny because last year I had my Oryx break and I got a new vacuum and you know the newer ones you empty the containers you don't have filter bags in most of them not the I didn't get an Oryx and so yeah I, I looked all around this house couldn't find any vacuum bags so I must have pitched them when I bought the new vacuum cleaner so I wasn't happy about that so that's when I went to using my bags um and Jess Grimsel Short says, I just printed out the pattern suggested by a doctor using the HIPAA filter. Yep. Um, let's see. Who else? I missed some people. Let me go back. Okay, so Elaine Doucette's here. Says, hi, T. Hi, Elaine. Welcome. Deborah Riches is here. Says, hello, everyone from the Gulf Coast of Mississippi. And Linda Griffin is here, says, I made 25 masks for our local hospital, taking a break before I make more. Exactly, because I made those 16 or 17, however many I made, and I sent like six of them out of town and got some other family members that want some, and I gave them to the other people, three people here locally. I got a couple more family members wanting some, but I don't know how much longer I'm going to be making them. Like I said, this is all the elastic I got left anyway, so when it's gone, I'm kind of going to be glad. <laughs> and I don't have like anything with the um the uh long hair scrunchy things that you can use for um elastic as well. I don't have any of that stuff here. I have the real little bitty ones that would be too tight to go back to the ear. So let's see. Got Kelly A here. Hi, TNT Quilters. A few minutes late, but I made it. Hope everyone is well. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, I think I said that before. Maybe I didn't. I don't know. <laughs> Debbie says, I'm using quilting cotton and flannel. I'm also putting a pocket in them for a filter. I've got coffee filters that I'm stacking two together and folding to slip inside. And I thought about using coffee filters as well. Because if they can run through the coffee pot and have water, then they should hold up to washing. But I wanted to make sure that they would hold up. So, Bonita, uh, I think somebody else said the help of, help a filter that Mary is saying 99% of the stuff, it keeps out 99% of the stuff in the air. Bonita says, I made a mask and wore to grocery store because, uh, the lockdown starts tomorrow in Mecklenburg County. So, yeah. Michelle Earnhardt is here, says hello to everyone. And everyone keep their distance. That's what Bonita was finishing off. Uh, Debbie says, mine's a rectangle. I'm also slipping a 22 gauge wire in for the nose bridge. And then. Diane said the guys, the people that she's doing, these guys want the straight mask with elastic, yes. So some of them are particularly wanting this particular style of mask. I do have uh, flannel on the back of this one, but I've decided that I'm going to just go ahead and put muslin on the back of the rest of mine. Because uh, I have worn mine to a couple of places. And if you leave them on, if you're inside, the flannel does get hot is what I found. And so you want to make sure that they can wear it more than 20 minutes. Because I had, when I first made the first one in my house, I was so hot already. And I put it on and I thought I was going to suffocate. But if you're outside going in and out of places, then the flannel one is, is not bad. 
And then I'm not putting anything in because I just felt like when my nose type, which is very similar to everybody in my family, that they actually fit pretty decent. So I wasn't worried about that. And then like the people that actually work in healthcare, they also have the basic mask that they put up under here so that they can now wear their basic mask all day. And then they can switch these out throughout the day is what I made them for them for. So yeah, so that's um, what I'm currently doing. That's the end of a horrific week for me, but as always a positive to everything. <laughs> in my life if you're in my facebook group you already know part of what happened in my week is that i my check engine light came on on my car and so i took it into the shop uh thinking that you know it's a new car it should be covered under warranty come to find out i've got some a new family of squirrels i noticed that there was a lot more squirrels in the area recently and, but I didn't, still didn't pay him any attention or whatever. Come to find out when I finally got a chance to look at my car, I, the squirrels had started building nests inside of my engine, under my engine or in the engine area. And then after that had started eating the wires. So yeah, so I had to just pay for rewiring uh, of some stuff in my car. And also, Right after that happened, my mom called. She's Her refrigerator has been on the blink, and so I've kind of known it and been kind of putting it on the back burner because I know it's going to be my responsibility out of everybody in my family. <laughs> but, you know, it, it was just barely moving. And then I went over, what holiday did we just go to my mom's house? What day did we just go to my mom's house? Hmm. Maybe we just, oh, it was her birthday. She cooked for her birthday on March 9th. And so instead of us taking her out, she ended up cooking for the family. So we went over there. And I went to put the food up. I was helping pack up the food at the end. And I went and opened the refrigerator and the light bulb was hanging down in the center of the refrigerator. And I'm like, oh my gosh, just wires all exposed and everything. And then I didn't feel like it was really cold enough. So... I went ahead and decided that she needed to have <laughs> a new refrigerator. So spending money impromptu that I wasn't planning to spend. Uh, yeah, and that's not all. <laughs> but let me go back and read some more comments here. Diane says, wait a minute, Deborah says, I purchased the elastic headbands from Family Dollar. I know because they were saying that like all the stores were out of the quarter inch elastic. And then now some of the stores are now not having the um, headband elastic because people are now going to it as well. But Joann's was giving out free kits and they even ran out of elastic. And it seems like all the orders, people couldn't get more elastic. So that's, I'm glad you found something. Uh, Diane says, I'm putting aluminum foil folded over for the nose. I've seen that too. And I also seen people using the aluminum pans that the recycle, well, the, they say they're recyclable, but those aluminum tins you can get at the dollar store, they were using those and cutting that up. I also saw people like using floor wire and also, um, I forgot what you call those things, uh, the wires that have the little fluffy stuff on them. They were using those, too. <laughs> I don't know why I can't remember what the name of that is. But, yeah, so a lot of people are substituting a lot of things that will make it so it's still washable. Debbie says, I made the elastic around the ears for myself and family, but the hospital wants the ties, which is great because elastic is nowhere to be found here or online. You're right, and... Uh, if you got bias tape, if you're a collector of that, that's a great, this is a great project to use it up. And Diane says, oh no, your car. <laughs> Ann McNew is here. Hi, Ann. How are you? <laughs> she says, I have been assembling, sewing them, figuring the easiest way to sew multi is the quickest manner. I will be posting how-to video on my YouTube hopefully tomorrow. We'll send you the link if you like. You can do that. Or just post it in T Quilt's um, Facebook group and make sure you post it in there. 
Cheryl Clute says, that happened to my sister. Rats in New York City ate the wires. Yes, that's what they first told me was, like, uh, ma'am, do you park your car in the garage? I'm like, no, most of the time I leave it out on the street. And they go, well, you you must have rats. I'm like, I don't have rats. <laughs> if I had rats, I would not be in this house. <laughs> but, yeah, but it's, it's the squirrels. Had all kind of stuff up under there. So, And somebody told me uh, locally that, the reason why that's happening more is because they they are making the wires out of some sort of soy base and so they want to eat that so technology huh <laughs> remo js is here says good evening from bowie maryland welcome to the chat elaine says good grief trouble always comes in threes yes it does and cheryl says she used twist ties that's a good idea too i hadn't heard of anybody using twist ties Pipe cleaners. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> I don't know. I got a whole lot of those. But I've just been leaving the, leaving the bridge alone for me and my family. So, Deborah Richards is reminding everybody to hit the thumbs up button. Thanks, everybody, for being in here. I appreciate it as well. Michelle Thompson says, twist ties. Dolly Farmer says, going to look for elastic tomorrow. Phyllis Garner says, I'm cutting masks while listening. Uh, Francine says, good evening, Miss T and all the tea quilters. Hope you all are doing well. I am, and I hope you are too. Hope all of you tea quilters or people just in general are well. I don't wish anyone uh, this disease or virus on anyone. My brother is here. He said, hey, sis, I'm here. I didn't get a notification and how's everyone. Now, this time I did go in at, I think it was 5 o'clock and I made the live. So you should have gotten a notification today. Putting for the soul says, uh, it stops, says they get mine, and that's it. Carol Goulet says, here from Alabama, making masks and scrap caps. That's pretty cool. And scrub caps, I didn't, sorry about that. I didn't know they were looking for scrub caps, too. June says she's good. Mike is here, says, pray for me and Kevin with our jobs. They both work for the airline, so... Yeah, I talked to Kevin, I guess, Monday, I guess. Um, we video chatted. And yeah, it is uh, hard for the airlines because if you got people that are coming in and out on these particular flights, they're being exposed all the time. So yeah, do pray for them. Pray for our airline people. It's a whole lot of people we need to pray for. Our grocery people, our police our healthcare workers, our pharmacists. We, that's a long list of people that are critical. Our people that work in uh, manufacturing, which my husband is also considered essential. Diane says that she got her notification, so that's good. At least they go out to some. June says she didn't get noticed until 6.30, but I know for a fact that it was 5-something when I did it today because I wanted to make sure I didn't wait till the last minute. Uh, got the squirrels got my fuel lines on my truck oh my god oh my gosh I'm going to have to do something about these squirrels that's for sure <laughs> Lauren King says hi T from Dallas Texas hi welcome to the chat our medical hero needs a lot of PP personal protection equipment you are correct but i didn't know that they were actually out of the scrub caps nobody has ever actually said that particular word that i heard shakita pearson is here she says hi tan everyone headed into work pray for healthcare workers exactly got my prayers girl stay safe kelly says i haven't been able to make any yet but the patterns i use i have used ties not elastic max needs to be close fitting and since we all have different size heads ear placement figure ties would fit everyone and that's true too um <laughs> vivian says dogs would get rid of squirrels yeah but then i've got to feed the dog you know i don't want a dog because i'd rather have a cat if i had to have an animal because i can at least go away for two days and come back without having to worry about uh, a dog, kenneling a dog, 
And I almost think that I would rather have kitty litter than poop in my yard. <laughs> you know, because I do babysit my granddaughter. And while I do it, I'm not real happy about all of that. So, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. And my husband's not keen on a dog either because somebody's got to take care of this dog. So, I do want to go ahead and tell you that I did receive blocks from Kelly A. She's in the chat room. I did not go over that. I wanted to make sure she was here before I start talking about that. And she is out of Overland Park, Kansas. So, thank you so much. She says she sent in 55 blocks. I am just opening this, Kelly, and I have not confirmed through email, but I will confirm an email so you can have it in writing that I have received your blocks. It's just been a lot going on, and I haven't been on the computer since yesterday when I picked up your package. So, she does have return envelope with uh, stamps. And she has her note with the information on it, 55 blocks, five sets of 10, and then five loose. So I'm going to see if I can get the small, I don't know if I can pull out the small one or not. Two, three. And I see your check here too for your shirt. I mailed your shirt. I actually posted it on Tuesday because Monday was that bad day for me where I was paying, getting my car, paying for car, and then paying, <laughs> ordering a refrigerator and getting it delivered to my mom's house. So, yeah. And I have never in my life been online and bought a major appliance sight unseen. <laughs> it was delivered today, so it was fortunate that it did work out, so... Uh, Kelly has some beautiful fabrics here, beautiful work. I'm trying to make it so her papers are trying to fly because of my ceiling fan. But I want to show you at least two of her blocks. <laughs> here you go. Here's one very pretty fabric. And this is the set of five, I think. Because it doesn't have a, a pin in it. Her sets of tens have pins. And here is another one. And since we don't have a whole lot that's quilt related, I'll go ahead and show you one more. <laughs> Very nice. Very good mix of fabric. So thank you so much. And then I, the question did come up in on my Facebook site. Somebody asked about these white pieces having to be spot on center. No, they do not. They just need to have fabric going around them before that, before the, the black. This cannot touch the black. So it doesn't, it can be sitting right here. It doesn't have to be centered. You can try to spot for center, but you know, depending on the size of your scraps, everybody, every block that you make, even when you're making 50, the center is going to sit in a different spot unless... You are making them super big and then squaring them all up at the end to make sure your block is center. And that definitely is not necessary. So I'll just count your stacks of 10. 20, 30, 40, that's 55. Okay, so I'm just going to take you all's words for us because I'm getting to the point now that it's beginning to be a chore to count to 50, 55, however many blocks people are sending. So if you're short a block or two, uh, I will apologize in advance. The goal is to get you back as many blocks as you send, but I will be having helpers working with me on this, and so a mistake could happen. So, But my goal is to send you back the exact number of blocks that you have sent in. I'm trying to get this put back in here because I don't like to leave this stuff out. Um, I might forget what goes with what. <laughs> I don't want that to happen. 
And I'm not even sure what number we're on as far as how many I've received, but I'm just going to guess and say this is either 14 or 15 as far as number of people that have already sent their blocks in. And again, since we're, I just showed the blocks, we're on the topic, please try to get your blocks in by May 15th instead of May 31st. I will put out a, a community post on it, and that way I can try to get these blocks sorted by the end of May and get them in the mail. Um, and that's because if we have the T-Quilts retreat, which it could be canceled due to the coronavirus or rescheduled, not necessarily canceled, but rescheduled, then I wanted to make sure that I had everybody's blocks in so that I can get them sorted at a place where I have a big room because I'm gonna need a large space in order to sort these blocks out. So, Let's see, see where I left off. And then I'll tell you about the rest of my week. <laughs> ah. You're welcome, Kelly. Uh, Michelle says, my daughter is a nurse at the hospital. It's scary with new cases of the virus every day. Exactly. I can understand and I know it would just be horrific. I got my, my sister is a platonomous, I guess that's how you say it. Um, and so she's dealing with the blood, you know. But on the flip side, she works for a facility that's ex extension of the hospital. But it was funny because today she got noticed that she was laid off for one to three months. So, but I have a feeling they're going to be calling her back in. Francis Jackson is here. Hi, Francis. Welcome. Says, hi, T. Peggy says she's working on her blocks right now. June says, I have a cat. He's only four. There are days my other cat was 26 years old, found I needed another one. I needed another one. This one is very cuddly until he decides to help in the sewing room. Yes, I saw. I think you were the one that posted a picture where it was all over the sewing machine. Lisa Pegg says, love the blocks. Thank you so much. Kelly says, thank you. <laughs> um, Judy Smith says, those are beautiful blocks. Diane says, the rest of the kids should have pitched in. The rest, oh, they're not going to do that. <laughs> I was like, the rest of what kids? No, they're not going to do that. Mm -mm. Michelle says, a pretty colors in the blocks. Jim says, nice blocks. Kelly says, I triple check the sets of 10, and she's laughing. Yeah, I'm going to take your word for it because my brain can't even handle counting. <laughs> uh, a lot of people saying your blocks are beautiful. Angela says, pray for me. The doctor is treating my retina problem with my eyes. Has said that the parent company wants to close them down, and without the shots, I will go blind. Oh my gosh, yes, that is serious. But I thought they were only canceling uh, like elective surgeries, things that were not absolutely necessary. And that sounds necessary to me. So, and be, you know, you need prayers just for them doctors and to make sure that they're, they stay safe and healthy if they're messing with um, you in surgery. So, yes, honey, pray all around. Linda says, welcome. Linda DeVito says, welcome from Rockaway, New Jersey. Hope everyone is safe and well. Same to you, Linda. <laughs> Linda says, you don't have to send me back 55 blocks. I sent extra just in case others were accidentally short. <laughs> You're okay. Whatever you, you, the goal is to get you back 55 different blocks, but we'll see how that works. <laughs> okay. Um. Cheryl is praying for you, Angela. Peggy says, I'll help you with the distribution of the blocks if you need. Uh, probably will, but I'm going to see if I can get all the blocks in or the majority of the blocks in. And then if I have a retreat, I have a retreat scheduled in May if we go. And then also if I do it at Scrap Club, you will be there, Peggy. So I'll be pulling some Scrap Club members. So thank you. Cheryl says, Angela, you are in my prayer sending hugs your way. And Angela says, fox urine may make squirrels scamper. I bought something from the hardware store that says, if you put this out, 
that it would make it so the it was something that was going to cause some kind of a smell you had it was kind of like granulates and you put it out in the area and then you wet them down which i did with my holes even though the ground was damp i wanted to make sure that they went into the soil i went back outside like two hours later they was back in my yard just having a ball okay <laughs> so that didn't work <laughs> um and I don't want to get cages because if I, I'm not getting that close to a squirrel. And if I buy the cages that I saw like at uh, Home Depot, they were like maybe $25 and they were small. And I'm like, I'd have to have a lot of those. And squirrels are pretty smart. They see one of their friends and one, they're not going to go in there. So yeah, but I'm going to fix it because they can't keep chewing up my car. Uh, Michelle, oh, Rhonda Barlow is here, says, hello, and everyone. Don't forget to check the thumbs up button. Thank you so much, Rhonda, and welcome. And Angela, you're getting all kinds of prayers, so thank you guys for that. You all are so supportive. Patrice Crump says, prayers to Angela. Can they recommend anyone else? The hospital might be able to help sending hugs. Melissa Sprague is here, says, hello, everyone. I put copper wire. I stripped in the simple mass for nasal area works good i did three layers 100 percent cotton had what i needed at the house trying to get some more done pretty cool and i like how you know us quilters are like that anywhere crafters in general we always would try to figure out something else that would work at home without having to go purchase something else but that's pretty cool but i just couldn't believe that elastic was gone <laughs> one eighth and quarter inch elastic is just gone uh debbie says my medical appointment was changed to a phone appointment i'm just hoping this thing doesn't delay my radiation and that's happening to a lot of people too where they're having online or telephone uh, calls with their doctors instead of in office visits uh phyllis says finish 50 blocks still need to square up <laughs> Uh, Debbie says, just hoping my phone appointment doesn't say I also need chemo. Oh, that would be a horrible way to receive news. Hopefully, you'll have somebody that can be there with you when you get your phone call. Prayers all around. That's just horrible. <laughs> Diane says, call an exterminator. And that may be the next thing, but I've tried to do something that I shouldn't have done, but I've done it anyway, you know. <laughs> and, uh... I'm hoping that it works, and if not, I do have a niece that works for Terminex, so I will be calling her next. I'll call their uh, their company, make sure she stay employed. Melissa says, may our Redeemer meet the challenges of all requesting prayer and defeat the issue. May it be so. Amen. June says dogs don't help. They torment them. That's so funny because my little grand dog, she comes over here and she just chases the squirrel. But if they stopped and didn't move, she would just stand there and figure out. She wouldn't even know what to do with them. She, she's not going to do anything. She's such a sweet little dog. But she just loves chasing them because she knows they'll run. Bianca Quilt a Quilt says, Holla T. Hey, how are you? <laughs> welcome to the chat Cheryl says sending prayers and hugs for you Debbie and Cheryl says her MRI was cancelled so a lot of things are being cancelled Melissa says T I love your smile thank you so much I hear that big cat urine can discourage the squirrels okay but how am I where am I getting that do you buy that <laughs> I'm not I'm not nature <laughs> involved at all i don't even know anything about animals because i'm really scared of all animals for real for real but yeah so the rest of my week i ended up having uh i did do some videos if you all didn't see the videos i uploaded please check those out i'm actually editing one right now that i think i finally got processed i need to upload to youtube um i oh I was the other thing that came up impromptu in my schedule was I had a have a friend and this was in Facebook group as all well, as well. She's uh, working on a Hoffman Challenge project, and so I actually quilted 
her project for her. So that was something that I wasn't planning on. So I had to slide that in and it took me like ooh, about two days to get that project quilted. So that was pretty good and that was fun. And I don't know, I can't show that one either because I don't know if she's going to be accepted. The deadline is the end of this month to get a photo in. And then I don't know how they do it after that because I've never done a Hoffman challenge. Also, I did quilt two quilts for me. Today, I put the binding. I finished the binding because I put the binding on my machines while they're on the long arm because it's just easier. But then I have to finish the tails. And then I also have to make a label. So I made two labels today. I put the binding and finished the binding and the label on one. I just need to hand sew it to the back. And on the other one, it's still on the long arm because I need to piece binding. So I'm going to be piecing this up to put onto the quilt. I'm trying to think, what else did I do quilt related this week? Mm. That's it. And then <laughs> this is the last thing, last drama feel week. Six o'clock this morning, my daughter, I'm, well, I don't, I'm not even up at six because I go to bed about four. So if you don't call my house phone, then you won't be hearing from me. So she called, she, she called me on my cell phone or text me on my cell phone. I'm not sure which one she did now and told me when I wake up to give her a call, no big deal. So I'm like, okay, so I wake up and I go, well, why is she calling me at six o'clock in the morning if it's no big deal? Come to find out she's she was in an accident on the highway her tire exploded threw her into the median spun her around on the highway and then she said she was able to uh, steer the car to get to the right side of the highway and thank god nobody else was there so yeah <laughs> it's been a very full week for me some good some bad <laughs> and i've been just trying to keep sewing to keep my mind off of all the stuff that's going on, you know. The I've been looking at, uh, you know, the week, this was the week that the virus stuff got really bad on the news. So I watched, I watched a good portion of it, but I'm trying not to overwatch. But uh, I am watching a lot more this week than I have been watching before because it seemed like it was constantly rising. The number was going up too high. So, but yeah, just, she just lucky she was covered by God and that he got her off of that highway and that there was nobody else on that highway at 6.45 this morning when she had her incident. So now we just got to figure out what to do about her car. Well, she does. Uh, I'm trying to have her do it because I don't want to, um, you know, you got to grow up and do things for yourself. So I'm trying to, like, give her encouragement on what she needs to do next and things like that without me actually doing it. So... Um, Carolyn Temple is here. She says, hello from Maryland. Hi, Carolyn. Welcome. Darlene says, put an owl out. A bird, a prey statue may help. I don't know. These squirrels are pretty bold. <laughs> June Hansen says, I'll send you some. That is too funny. <laughs> Kim is here. She says, late start, but I am here. Thank you so much. We've been on for 43 minutes already, guys. Cheryl says, a hunting supply place like Cabello's. Okay. And I don't even know if the one we had close to my house kind of closed. So I don't even know where the next one is. I have to look it up. You can buy it at hunting or animal supply stores. D.D. Hansen is here. Says, sorry, I'm late. I made my first hospital mask today. That's pretty cool. Melissa says, rubber snakes, if you move them around, I hear it will cause squirrels to leave. Wow, I didn't know that. And John Elkin says, that's the third thing. <laughs> You're good now. I hope so. <laughs> I'm like, everybody's trying to get in my pocket. And Remo JS says, praying for your family. Thank you so much. Just praying for everybody in general, just that everybody is covered. That's the main thing. Everybody needs prayer. Thank God your daughter is okay. Praise God that your daughter had an angel protecting her. We had our first casualty up here in regard to... We had our first casualty up 
here in regards to the elephant in the room. Yes. So that's really horrible. That is, that's just horrible. Um, just a bad way to go because it's, it hurts so much from the people that have survived. We're talking about how much it hurts to breathe. And that's bad when it hurts to breathe. So, Kelly A says, uh, glad she's okay. Lime, get it from a feed store. Okay, I can try that too. I can try lime. But yeah, so I've had so much going on this week that I didn't even, I couldn't even write it down. I didn't even try to write it down. I, I don't even know if I told you everything that happened in my week. But yeah, it's been a lot. Um, I did organize my uh, quilt tops that need to be quilted. Kind of got them all in stacks of quilt tops that have backings already made. Quilt tops that need borders. And then quilt tops without the backings. And I got, like, I got all of those sorted out. And then I've got all of my backings that I had purchased all kind of to get together as well. So I'm going to be just doing a whole lot of quilt backings because I realized that I had more quilt backings than I thought I ever had. <laughs> so, and I even have, I even got quilt backings on the roll because I was selling it at my, when I been. And so I got plenty of quilt backs. So I may not be making any scrappy backs for a while because I need to get rid of some of this stuff that's just being stored. Um... Ray says, my wife's a snake. Keep squirrels away. <laughs> your wife says that snakes keep squirrels away. Is that what you're saying? Or your wife's snake. Does, do your wife have a snake? Hmm. I didn't know that if she do. I think that's what he's saying, that his wife has a snake. Uh, Angela says, did you get my blocks? No, not yet. I actually went to the um, post office today around 1230. And there wasn't anything in the P.O. box today. And uh, Remo says that the lime will keep snakes, rats, and mice away. And I can get that from a feed store. I think I had a place that sells horse foods and stuff like that. And I'm wondering if they sell that kind of stuff. So I have to look at that. Uh, Patrice says, maybe try a tractor supply store. They sell hunting stuff. Thank you. Dee Dee says, I got fabric from Cherry Wood to do the rail fence quilt you recently showed up. <laughs> showed us is what I think what she means. It says, but a little delay due to mask. I can understand. Uh, we had a problem with entire families going out to the beach here. Our highways were bumper to bumper along the coast. Worse than July 4th. Oh my gosh. That's crazy because they're trying to tell you not to go out into places like that. Darlene Farmer says the stress reference to the virus aggravated my rheumatoid arthritis. Had to back away. Yes, indeed. It is kind of stressful sometimes. Sometimes I can get real low key about it and then like the last two or three days... It's kind of stressed me a little bit more because of how, how the number of cases have increased. So I kind of um, got a little bit more worried about it, but I'm trying to go back on the other side of it myself. And she's saying Governor Newsom is so mad. <laughs> and she says they should. It is used in horse stalls. Okay. So I'll try to go to the horse place instead of going to a big major store. And see if I can find some other stuff to put out. But <laughs> Lisa says, geez, T, what a week. Thankful you're... Let me see. It came, fell off the screen there. Mm, thankful your daughter is safe. You can also try plants like mint, invasive plant, a penny royal, or castor oil spray. Okay. And Deborah says, good night to all. Have a blessed week. Bye-bye, Deborah. Uh, Kayla is here. She says, hello, coming in late. Has anyone used washable markers to censor a pattern on their quilt? So she's asking, has anyone used those washable markers that you can put?
put on your quilt. And I don't know if she's talking about, well, she didn't say the ones that you use heat. She says washable. I have used a washable blue marker and I have used a washable uh, purple marker, which also would disappear. I tend to like, it depends on how you're going to quilt. I have used a blue marker, but I find if you use the blue marker, you're going to have to actually wash the entire quilt. Because if you spray it to get the blue marker out, all it does is sink into the batting. And then when it's dry, it just comes right back up to the surface. So I find you have to submerge the entire quilt into water in order to get rid of that. If you're using the purple disappearing pen, I find that one works better for me in my humidity area in St. Louis area. And uh, it does disappear fast, but... I don't have to wash the quilt to get it out. It actually does disappear and it's actually gone. So let's see what other people are saying. See if they got any advice for you. Uh, June says, don't have any cases in my town. Lucky so far. And Bianca was asking whomever that was, what state they were in. I, I don't want to go back because then my screen will go crazy. Uh, Bonita says, have you finished all of your ablums? I have finished the base ablums for all, all that I needed for this immediate group, and I'll probably make them for my family for Christmas, maybe. I don't know yet. I haven't decided because by the time I get back into what I'm doing, it probably, I may be done with ablums because they, they are fun, they are addicting, but they do take a lot of time that I, you know, could have been working on other things, but I try to work on things as deadlines are due. And thinking, that's the one thing I forgot to tell you, was that a lot of things that I had scheduled in the month of March and April have been canceled due to the virus as well. So I was able to organize, I took that time to organize my digitizing designs for my machine. Even though I just got it, I bought some designs in bulk where you can spend like say three or five hundred dollars on some designs and then what you do is they'll they send you a group of designs and then you can uh, sort them so I had a lot of designs I needed to sort so that's what I've been kind of working on um so I've been using my so-called downtime which isn't downtime because I actually work from home I just did some things since my lectures and workshops were cl uh, closed were canceled or postponed uh yeah so i'm just taking advantage of that time uh but diane says got really angry this week when the governor's assistant or assistant governor said that all grandparents should be willing to die for the economy <laughs> yeah that was really bold wasn't it mm -mm. Angela says cayenne pepper may upset them too. I can try that. I got a big thing of cayenne pepper I get from Sam, so I'll try that. And Darlene says no, try to stay with chalk. She's telling Kayla that for marking. Kim says I have used a Crayola washable markers. I have not used those. June says that she's in Iowa, one um, hour north of Sue. Su I can't say that city. I can't say it. <laughs> Iowa. She's in Iowa. <laughs> Suax. Uh, but I know I'm messing that up. Um, let's see. Mint doesn't work. I try it for mosquitoes, and the squirrels were still running around. <laughs> Cheryl says, I would think the air pens would be better. Yeah, I just tend, to, I know that we have new things that come out in the quilting industry, and I've been quilting since 1994, so I tend to stay with what works. So when they came out with those heat-resistive pens, I forget what brand they are. A lot of people love them. I don't want to use them because what I use does work for me, so. <laughs> uh, Cam says, I am from the... So y'all coming up with these names, y'all just putting them in here because you know I can't say them. I don't go to these places, so I don't know all these city names.
Patrice says, I'm a grandparent raising my grandson. Who will raise him? And I'm not the only one doing this. Uh, Melissa says, yeah, cayenne pepper will keep cats from their ground, like on my balcony. I sprinkle it, and they haven't been back. Okay, so I can go out and do that tonight just to make sure. I will tell you, I've seen less of them, though, <laughs> from my little trick that I'm not going to say I did on here. But I've seen less. i only seen, like, I saw two yesterday and one today. And Kayla is asking, do you have to wash your quilt more than once to get the Crayola marker out? Uh, Melissa says, Jesus died. Are we paying attention? What? <laughs> He's alive and well. Um, no, you had it right, T. Sounds like Sue. Okay. Judy says, gotta go. Good night, all. Good night. Uh, Kim says, no, the crayon markers come out on first washing, but you can check it on a test fabric. So, somebody was saying we had something come in here with spam. Is that what happened with the Jesus is dead thing? I don't know. Um... Because June was saying, Diane or Benita, can you help? We have spam. Um, if you want to be a moderator, too, just pop your... Let me know down in the comment chat box, and I'll make you a moderator. If you want to be a moderator, you can help keep out the spammers. I would appreciate it. Um, slowing down, Joe, come in. Says, super late. Hi, y'all. Uh, and Quilting for the Soul says, I can't tell you what I use for squirrels, but cayenne pepper doesn't work. And I did use something, and I think it's working, but I don't want to say what I used. <laughs> but I was thinking if I could be less aggressive, then I would do that. But I know I bought the first thing, and it didn't work, so I went real aggressive the second time. So, yeah. That's it, Francis. She says, I use friction pins, and they work well for me. And that, that's the one that you use heat, and they disappear and then some people said that, uh, so you kind of iron them away. And then some people say that if you it was winter time, then they it would show back up in some quilt. So I don't use that. But thank you for adding that, uh, Francis, because that's what I was looking for. Carl says, T, what did you use for your quilt wall? I have gridded flannel one, but bigger items won't stay and need to be pinned. That's just warm and natural batting, 100% cotton that's on the wall. Um, if I missed your comment, just pop it back down in the chat box. <laughs> um... Okay, Tucker, I'm going to do that. I'm going to add you as a moderator. So I just did it. Uh, Quilting for the Soul, are you saying I know me too? Want to be a moderator? Is that what you're saying? I have a friend who uses a pellet gun. Yeah, and that's what I was going to have my brother come over and do, but I don't want him to get in trouble because you're not supposed to have BB guns in our county. So, yeah. <laughs> Quinn for the first soul says no. <laughs> uh, T, call an exterminator. Yep. I may do that too. Um, Michelle the Quilter says, Head, have to leave, ladies, making masks for hospice, watching from central New York. I'll watch the replay. Stay well, everyone. Thank you for stopping in, and thanks for supporting the New York hospital system. Uh, 
said she tried everything and it didn't work. Wow. And see, what I heard about squirrels, too, is that they, uh, like, if you move a family out, another family just moves into the nest that, for some reason, they all gravitate toward the nest. It's only going to be empty for a, a period of time. But this is the first time that I've ever had squirrels that were, like, that was this bad. And that was all in the drive, all in the yard, to be this massive. It, one time, like maybe over 10, 15 years ago maybe, one of them bit our Christmas wires. And so I had to plug them back in. And so the only thing that I did, because squirrels will come back and do the same thing if they get away with it one time. But they're pretty smart. And if you get one, the other ones will stop. So what I did was left my Christmas lights on for like 24 hours. And so another one came over to bite, and they must have got a little stung, and then I hadn't had any more problems the rest of that year, and I didn't leave them on all day after that. And say so the squirrels are terrible here in Topeka, Kansas. Kayla says she's going to try the Crayola marker and post in the Facebook group her results as I have those on hand. Okay, so I think that's it. Mothballs may help. I wonder what they, you think they'll work outside though? Cause it's an open area. I know mothballs smell horribly in a enclosed area. So Maria says, good night all. Back to working on my tumbling blocks. Stay well, you too, Maria. I'm trying to stay in as much as possible only to get food. My, since my husband's got to go out anyway, I send him sometimes to the store. But I have to do the Sam's run because he it's just too much for him to be in Sam's. He doesn't know how that store is set up because I'm the one that mostly do those runs. So, um, yeah. Got Robin Boyd says, hello, T. Hi, Robin. Dee Dee says, I live on 34 acres of trees. I have squirrels, deer, turkeys, rabbits, raccoons, foxes, coyotes, hawks, owls, etc. You name it, I have it. Gave up on what goes on outside. <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, getting staples removed from heart surgery and treatment tomorrow. Praying that goes well that your appointment isn't canceled for that. He says, trying to keep animals out of the house. That's her goal. <laughs> Debbie says, we're having problems with gophers, and now the raccoons are joining in on the other side of the yard. One is digging up, and the other is digging down. And I'm having problems with gophers, too, because I uh, was walking out in my line, and it's a little bit softer to the under the feet, and I felt a few holes. So I don't want to get my ankle twisted up in one of them. So I now make sure that I don't walk on the lawn unless I've got on, like, uh, my outdoor yard shoes that are have a really good solid base on the bottom. But, yeah, that, I don't know what's going on. Maybe we're build, doing so much building that we're pulling these animals out of their normal habitats. <laughs> Diane is so crazy. She goes, all you have to do is cover your car in Christmas lights. <laughs> That's a good one. June Hansen says, hugs to all. Bye. Stay safe and well. <laughs> and Kelly says, did anyone else do the quarantine quilt alone this past Sunday? I did not do the quarantine quilt alone because I was quilting on my friend's quilt on Sunday and Monday. But I did download the pattern, and I may do it at some point. And Robin's asking, what are you working on? I'm actually making these masks, too, making them for family members. Because I have a lot of family members that are in, that are deemed essential employees. Everybody but my husband, he said he's not going to wear a mask. I'm like, okay. <laughs> That is too funny. Terminate plant flower squirrel hate. Daffodils have a toxin that makes them inedible. Squirrels don't like the taste of snowdrops. Hyacinths, so plant those spring bulbs as a deterrent. Okay. 
Hey, Tucker, it already showed you as a moderator. Uh, speaking of outside, it snowed here this morning. I thought it was spring. <laughs> laughing out loud. We had snow. Uh, uh, in Missouri, they always say, in Missouri, if you don't like the weather today, hang around for a day or two because you can get all seasons in within a week here. And that's exactly what happened here. We had hail with snow. Are you going to do any lives between your regular Wednesday lives? It has been fun to sew along with quilters on random days. That's from Kayla. You know, I was thinking about doing one on Saturday and then you know start getting information about the car and all of that kind of stuff so i kind of kind of got a little discouraged and then i started editing videos and i was having some issues some computer issues my uh my video was saying that it was 40 minutes and then when i uploaded to youtube it kept saying it was an hour and 16 minutes and then my voice wasn't connected with the video and so uh, the last couple of videos I've uploaded, I've had to do it like three and four times. So I don't know what's going on with that. I'm having to reprocess my videos. But um, so, and that's why I didn't do it. I really intended to come on at some point in the week. And then this week just went bizarre. Some good things again and some bad things. So I did get two quilts quilted. So that's good. I just got to work on the bindings now. And I'm trying to clear out some of my UFOs. Trying to get those done. So, but I might come back and do some. Elaine says, Nighty night. Thank you, prayers to all you on your medical appointments and good health. That's really sweet. Thank you so much. Angela says she's paper piecing a Cleopatra's paint uh, fan. She did find the pattern she was looking for last week. That's pretty cool. Um, let's see. Uh,. So, I must have missed a comment about Cheryl says she started. And then uh, Kelly says, me too, Cheryl. Started but not finished. Watched the first two live streams but developed a migraine so the rest of the day was shot. Um, they're talking about the sew along. The quarantine sew along. And Deb says she's only got two acres but in the hills. People are posting mountain lion pictures on next door. I don't even want to know if one of those critters is passing through my yard at night you got that right <laughs> same here in chicago with the change of weather yes indeed honey chicago is way worse than st louis area because i went to chicago in june and i took uh like you know i went to the i was going to a cards cup game and took maybe long sleeve shirt maybe and some you know regular t-shirts and stuff thinking you know it was burning up here in st louis i went to downtown chicago and whoo it was so cold i refused to buy a coat i saw people walking around in mink or fake mink coats whatever they had their fur coats and um yeah but i decided i wasn't gonna buy a coat but i did end up buying a sweatshirt but it was cold honey chicago don't play downtown Uh, Kelly says, same for Kansas with this weather. She says, except you don't have to wait all day. Just one day last week, temp rose to 72 degrees by early afternoon, then dropped to 28 by 6. Woo, that's pretty fast. Mm -mm. Melissa says, nice chatting. You all stay safe, happy, and crafting. And may your creator see himself when he see us. Next, uh, Till next time, sweet sleep. Bye-bye, Melissa. Thank you so much for your prayers today. Patrice says, good night. My grandson will wake me at six, which is hard since I'm not a morning person. Take care. Stay safe, all of you all. Bye-bye. Good night. Uh, Quilting for the Soul says, working on a vintage parasol, ladies. I think you shared that link with me before. That's pretty cute, uh, pretty cute quilt. Kim says, Eastern Iowa is like the weather in Missouri. Okay, so that's good to know. And Robin is agreeing that it's cold off the lake. Rhonda says, I saw a sew alone, but since I'm still working, I didn't pay much attention. I'll go back and look and see if I like the pattern. And then there was also a Facebook thing that they're having some kind of virtual quilt show starting April 27th. And I don't know who's coordinating that. Uh, if you all don't know, the Paducah Quilt Show that's scheduled at the end of April has been postponed until September. They were not planning to have a September quilt show in Paducah, Kentucky. 
but now they have switched the spring quilt show to September instead. So just so you all know if you were playing Indigo Paducah and hadn't heard the information yet. Diane says, stay healthy, everyone. Let people know you love them. Have fun. Staying in. Nap. Talk on the phone. Tiffany is here. She says, hi, I'm assuming I'm super late. I was napping. I can't believe you actually <laughs> went to sleep, Tiffany. That's pretty good. That must mean you're feeling better. But yeah, so it's a busy week. I'm going to try to come on Saturday, maybe, and see if we can do some stuff. I don't know what I'll be working on, but uh, we'll just go from there. And uh, we're going to go ahead and end this live, and I will see you all for sure next Wednesday, but probably Saturday. And if I do Saturday, maybe I'll come on about... I don't know, 9 p.m. or something, try to get people that can't make it to the earlier 7 o'clock uh, because of the time differences here in the USA. So, goodbye, everybody. Thank you all so much for coming in. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button, and I will see you all next time. Stay blessed and stay safe. <laughs>